What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lyft Rideshare Experience video. This is number 12. I'm the Zim. This is the Zim video. I'm an artist and musician from Seattle, Washington, living in San Diego, and using Lyft as my primary source of income while I see if all those other things will make me money eventually. Um, but I love it. I'll just start off by saying I really like driving for Lyft. I think it's an excellent job. I'm really happy with um, the ability to do it. And yeah, it's working out real well for me. However, there are things that come up and we'll talk about them today. Um, so uh, as I always do, I start off with how much I made, then I go into my star rating saga. And then I have a few points, I actually have a few topics today that you saw in the title um, as well. So those are gonna be taxes, um, what Lyft does to your car, if you drive your own car, express drive, and the great debate, I'm calling it, and you'll find out what that is in a minute. So let's get started. So here's how much I made this week, $202 or something. I didn't make a lot at all because I couldn't drive that much. I had my kids at the beginning of the week, and then at the end of the week, my car started to go crazy on me. So I had a bunch of work done. I had to get brakes done, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. I'll talk about that when I get done to the low. So that's how much I made. Couldn't drive a lot, but I was kind of bummed because Saturday, oh my God, I bet Saturday in San Diego was amazing for a lot of people. Um, it just felt like if I was able to drive the whole day on Saturday, I would have killed it. I was so bummed. So anyways, um, looking forward, because it just I just know, I just know, and I'm sure other drivers have had this happen before, you can just feel the potential of the, having those days where it's like back-to-back -back rides, all good ones, and you just kill it, and it's uh, so um, it's gonna happen. And I feel like the summer is coming. I just started in February, as you know, and I feel like with the summer coming, it's gonna change things. So I'm looking forward to it. I think I think things are looking up for how much I'll be making every week. So we'll find out, won't we? So didn't make much last week. Um, and here's the daily breakdown of each day. So like on Saturday, I made like 90 bucks, which, and I barely drove. I like drove for a few hours in the morning and a couple hours after my car was in the mechanic. So anyways, I'll tell you about that in a second. And then, so star rating, obviously since I didn't drive, I only drove four days. Um, I only have a few stars. It's been holding out on that 4.9 again on the app side. And it's, um, and it's, uh, yeah, I, just, I think I got a few days of 4.92 is like where it's coasting. But when you don't get a lot of rides in, it doesn't fluctuate your um, star rating as much. When you when you pound, when you get a lot of rides in, then you could see your star rating move within the same week. So um, that's something to, that I've noticed when, I, when I'm riding. So to the point of interest today, taxes, first thing. So as you know, I do more than just drive lift. However... Driving list. I'm not sure if I'll put numbers. I'm not probably not going to put numbers up here, but um, I filed my. This is my first quarter of filing quarterly taxes, and I sent off. I have a CPA. I sent off my information to my CPA. I sent them. I tracked all the miles I had. I gave them all the miles I had. I all the maintenance stuff. I I sent them all the maintenance stuff. Uh, all the extra stuff I do for Lyft, uh, like water and things like that. I sent off all those uh, expenses, but plus my other companies, like my clutch there um, that I make, I had to buy materials for that, so there was a fairly large amount of expenses in that. Um, there's, I flew, I fly to Seattle every once in a while to to uh, do my music stuff and whatnot. I went, I had a trip last last quarter, so I had a, an airplane ticket and then a rental car and then some other surrounding costs around that. So there's a lot more than just my, what I make for Lyft kind of in the mix of all this. However, because of my, you know, income versus expenses ratio, I didn't have to pay any taxes. <laughs> so that my first quarter so far, I didn't have to pay any taxes. I did have to pay my social security kind of payment, which is a different thing than taxes. And that was like 300 bucks. So to go toward my social security stuff. But in terms of income, income tax for the state and, and government, you know, the government stuff, I didn't, at this point, I didn't have to pay any taxes. So track your expenses when you're, when you're uh, 
doing this thing that's i guess that's the key lesson that i think is there is like track your expenses so that when you file your taxes you can say i spent all this money on driving lyft or whatever maybe um and then maybe whatever other jobs you're doing because as you know i'm an advocate for um doing more than just one job if you're doing especially if you're doing lyft full-time um don't just drive lyft exclusively because yeah you know you can refer back to older videos for that that topic but um but yeah so anyways that's where my taxes were didn't have to pay any this quarter so we'll see where that rolls i'll i'll update you next quarter on the taxes um what lyft does to your car oh my god so when when you drive full-time um your car feels it your car start it, it will let you know that things need to get fixed you're driving it a lot and i feel very fortunate that i've had the flexibility in a sense to get things fixed as they've come up i'm currently right now at a point where i've learned that i think my mounts my engine mounts and transition mounts on my car have worn out or whatever so they need to be replaced and so that's a pretty it's going to be roughly 1300 bucks out of my pocket for it um and i don't know where that money is coming from at this moment but uh but it just it's something to consider if you're driving your own car full time it's gonna tell you when it needs help and the other thing that you know i drive enough you know well this the combination like i did have one la trip and then I did go to LA on my own for vacation purposes. I went to Disneyland with my kids and some friends. So all combined driving, it took me a month to reach 3,000 miles to get to have to get another oil change because you're really supposed to change your oil right 3, 000, every 3,000 miles or so. And I went to my mechanic. I was like, I already hit 3,000 miles. Should I change the oil again? And he was like, Yeah, you should. So you know. Something to consider if you drive your own car a lot, you're looking at getting your oil changed once a month, once every month and a half. Um, that's another expense. Luckily with like Pet Boys, I use Pet Boys. It's just what I needed to use at the time that I started this whole thing because they have they took the credit that I had for my old mechanic um, and it's like a very specific car maintenance credit. So I went there to get my car worked on and whatnot and like an oil and then they give you 10 percent off for being a lift driver so my oil changes are, are not that much you're like 30 bucks to get my oil change um with the good oil you know i get the more expensive oil now because of all the stuff like a high mileage you know synthetic oil all that good stuff but anyways so yeah so that's what happens to your car so and my car is a 2006 like i've told you before it's older anyway so it's really saying to me like hey you're driving me a lot i'm older car what's going on so what i've decided based on this whole experience i need the security personally of knowing that my cars like i don't have to worry about my car so i've signed up for the express drive program i don't have a car yet i just signed up today um to put my deposit in and i guess what you have to do is just check back every day and see if there's a car available and then to get because you're kind of on a it's not quite a waiting list but it's like there's there's no cars available right now in the san diego area for the express drive program so i have to get my own car fixed drive it until i can get my express drive car um but once that happens i'm looking forward to it um and like in past videos i mentioned i was kind of apprehensive about signing up Partly because I never really had the deposit to put down on it. And unfortunately, I didn't start it. Because when I first started driving, the deposit was $50. And now it's $250 for the deposit. Probably because the demand's so high for it. So the deposit's $250 for the Express Drive program. But um, I was really apprehensive about doing it for the deposit reason. But also for um, the fact that I, you know, like I, I told you, I'm, I have kids. And I, when I'm on my kids' schedule, when I have my kids it's a little bit harder for me to get as many rides in and I was worried about if I have to pay for the lease for the car the rental fee that would hurt things kind of but what I'm realizing now is that fee will will pay for peace of mind it's really what it's paying for for me so if I have to pay it sometimes 
then I'll be like, so be it. At least it's a car that I know is going to work. And if anything breaks on it, I'll just return it and get a different one, you know? So I won't have to be worrying about my own car as much. And I'm hoping that we'll see how it plays out. But you, obviously I drive a lot and you've seen in past weeks how much I drive that I'll every once in a while I'll hit the, the power driver bonus since I'll have a newer car and be actually get the bonus on top of it. So we'll see if that plays a factor. Um, how I'll learn, I'll let you know as I learn about all this and if the power driver bonus, how it works practically and what I, what you need to do to make it actually sustainable. I was always, my, I'll say this now, I always get I apprehensive about it because I believe there's a prime time ride aspect to it. Like you have to get so many prime time rides. I'm always driving during prime times, but I don't tend to go toward prime time zones. And I don't know if that's what they mean. You have to go into prime time zones or if it means just be out in the world while it's prime time, you know? I don't know. So we'll see what that happens and I'll let you know as I know. Um, so that's it. Oh no, I got one more thing, one more thing to talk about. So what I'm calling the great debate. So they, I wanted to have an example of everything that I put in my car, uh, but my car's in the shop right now and all my stuff is in the car. So I don't have the examples, but maybe I'll find some internet picture to put up right here. Um, so what I do in my car is I provide water and I'm, you know, I'm kind of nerdy extreme about some things just in general about life and stuff. And this is an example of how I get kind of a little bit extreme, but I don't think too extreme because I've seen worse. I've seen way worse and it almost, it's almost ridiculous how much worse it gets. But what I do is I provide water, I provide gum, I provide mints, winter mints, lifesaver winter mints, um, very important. And then I provide, um, I do dum-dums for fun because I think, I was like, what kind of candy could I provide that's kind of a fun candy? It's like dum-dums are, are fun. Dum-dums and cell phone power, I have both iPhone and Android cell phone power, and I have an aux cord on my, you know, music player. Um, so people can listen to it. That doesn't happen very often, um, but every once in a while somebody does. And I'm personally, so let me break down all that stuff. I'll start with the aux cord just because that was the last thing I mentioned. I am I see a lot of times online people just poo-poo other people's music. You know, I'm, I'm the type that I want to hear what you're playing. I, I'm so curious about what people play and what like. that. I, it, and I obviously I'm a musician as well, so I have a different relationship maybe with music than a lot of people do. And I really enjoy hearing other people's music. So far, everybody that's played music on my aux cord has, it's been kind of top 40 type music. So it hasn't been anything crazy, you know. So that's all, that's what's been going on there. So the debate, really, with this kind of stuff, there's this, this is argument, let me see if I can say this eloquently, but there's this kind of argument of peop, drivers like me that provide a lot of extra stuff bring an expectation for drivers that don't. And then it kind of, the drivers that don't don't feel like they get paid enough to go the extra mile, or do a little bit more for their customers. So they are, there's this really big divide between drivers that do it and drivers that don't. And the way I see it, my kind of um, thing around it is, I'm super grateful, as I mentioned on the top of this video, I'm super grateful for this job. It's providing me with the flexibility, just. The, lively, the livelihood, the lifestyle that I want, and the main, main reason is, two, well, two main reasons, but I think the main, first main reason is being able to be with my kids when I need to and not having to worry about taking off, their sit, whatever it is, I can just not drive and take care of my kids. The other thing, and be with them when I have them on my schedule, and that's super, that's in that, that's priceless to me to be able to do that. So there's that aspect of it. The second, luckily I have, you know, luckily the situation works for that. I don't know if, if you're a primary, like, single parent and that's you're always on, it might be hard for you to do this job. But since I have a week-on, week-off schedule, I can load up on hours when I don't have my kids. And then when I do have my kids, I just get hours in when I can. So there's that aspect of it. The next aspect of it is not having a boss. That is super huge for me. I just, I'm not the type of person that likes to work for other people. I mean, I know I'm working for Lyft in a lot of ways, but at the same time, we're basically contractors for um, doing the job. We have we have to pay our own taxes and all that stuff. So, which leads me to that point itself, being an independent contractor in this job makes it that 
basically we're all individual businesses out on the road and we can all run our own businesses the way we want I see it and it just makes sense to me to go the extra mile go a little bit farther for the customer service and I know there's a lot of argument that people say well you don't get more tips you don't get and for me it's a value it's, the tips isn't the only part of the thing it's knowing that I'm providing the best service I can and it really doesn't cost me that much to add water and, and gum and candy to the mix. It costs me maybe $10 a month for all that stuff at the rate I go through it. So it's like, and then I write it off, you know, it goes into the expenses category. So you get a little bit back in a way. Um, and it's really not that much extra. I'm driving a minivan currently, so it makes it easy to store that stuff and I can understand how it might... It could be harder in a, just a regular car, just like a sedan or something, to store extra water. But um, there's that aspect too. But to complain that there are drivers that will do more, it, it's, it's kind of like, um, I just don't understand it completely because um, we, we live, this is, that's, this is what our society is based on. It's based on uh, a capitalistic society. It's based on who's willing to work the hardest to do things and there are I feel like there are a group of us drivers that want people to 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 hold out because they don't want to look bad or something of that nature I think you get what I'm saying basically I don't really get the argument I think you should do you should treat your business as you want to treat it if other people are doing more and making you look bad then it's really on you to do more to to match it if you don't want to if you don't want to do more then that's just the way it works. This is this this is the the market of ride share driving is there are people that'll do more. So then it creates an atmosphere, it creates a um, expectation that more drivers will do more, and that's the market of ride share driving. And and I don't think complaining about it is not a benefit. The be the best way I think anybody can approach this is what can you do to match the expectations of the passengers to make everybody's ride even better. And if that means having water or gum or candy in your car, so be it. Maybe you don't need all of it. Maybe just one of those things will be enough. But um, I think, I don't know, that's the way I feel about it. I hope that was clear. If not, you can feel free to argue with me. I don't care. That's the way I feel about it. Or, or you can ask me if I didn't say it quite right. I would be happy to try again another time. So that's basically it. If you want to start driving, if you're watching this video because... Um, you found them and you um, like the practical, realistic, <laughs> what actually happens um, kind of conversation around rideshare driving uh, and you want to start driving for Lyft in particular, kick down the referral code. We both get some extra money because of it and that will be awesome. So do that. That's my referral code right there. And then also the clutch, I, was, I don't know, I've mentioned before, but I make a clutch is one of the things I do when I'm not driving and here's a discount code if you go to etsy so alexander thomas 2015.etsy.com and use that lift 20 code you get 20 percent off and if you want to know about my podcast i've been hustling my podcast really hard i do a podcast about the seattle northwest music community it's called word on the street that's the logo for it um check it out wotspodcast.com i'd love it if you take a listen and let me know what you think especially i'd love it if you let me know what you think but um Cool. All right. So I'll catch you the next time I do this. Maybe it'll be next week. I'll let you know about my car saga. See where we're at. If I got the express drive going or if I fix my car or whatever. But until then, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll talk to you next time. Peace.